show you a little bit about how to clean model airplane engines and a few other things with ethylene glycol or antifreeze. This is an HP-40 engine. Some careless owner never cleaned it. So with the castor oil based fuel, you'll get some blow by out of the carburetor and exhaust that will get onto these fins and on the head and will bake on there and you'll end up with this brown black crud that you, you just cannot get inside all of these fins and clean out these areas. Now this engine is black and I'm not really sure if this is a form of powder coat or if it's a uh, anodized but you can use carburetor cleaner. I'd get a one gallon can of carburetor cleaner and I'd take a lot of this stuff apart and dip it in there and it will certainly take off a lot of it but actually I have found that ethylene glycol does a better job on removing some of these burnt on deposits and carbon in that than what the carburetor cleaner did. This engine is locked up. It won't turn. The reason it won't turn is that the, the castor oil has dried out and it's latching on to the piston in the liner and possibly the bearings are, are sticking a little bit. So what we do first, we take these bolts out or take the carburetor off take the carburetor apart. This one, I put a little WD-40 on it, it's moving. You want to take it completely apart, remove any O-rings or anything that are in there, any pieces of nylon. We're going to put some WD-40 in here, WD-40 down the intake, WD-40 in here, and just let it sit. You do a few reapplications for a day or so. After it sits, you can hit this with a, a hot air gun or put it in the oven at a couple hundred degrees and warm it up get shop towel or an old oven mitt or something you can hang on to this and see if you can work this thing free. The objective is to take it completely apart. When you get done taking this all apart, this is going to be pretty greasy and rather than just throw this straight into the glycol, I usually wash this off a little mineral spirits, get rid of that grease, let it dry and then put it in the glycol. No reason to have that oily film on the glycol. This is an OS25 engine that I took apart. It was also locked up from castor fuel. Soaked it with WD-40, used a heat gun on it, took all of this apart. And you can see it's not as dirty as that HP engine, but it's got some deposits and stuff on here that they need to go. The piston's pretty dark. The top of the piston has that carbon and stuff on it. The carburetor was discolored and locked up. All this needs to be cleaned. So we're going to put this in the ethylene glycol and give it a good cleaning. The inside of your mufflers and inside of exhaust pipes for tuned headers and that, other pieces get very nasty. And you get a lot of stuff that's burnt on and deposited inside these pieces. The ethylene glycol will get in there and it'll, it'll loosen that stuff up. This is a pressure tap off of the muffler, the control bell crank for the carburetor, a little spring, an O-ring. And this piece has some small O-rings on it. This is out of the carburetor and I've chosen not to mess with this. This is actually quite clean and I don't want to mess up those O-rings. I wouldn't put plastic or rubber into this. I don't think it would affect it. Carburetor cleaner will completely dissolve them, but uh, just as a matter of habit, I'm not going to put these in the ethylene glycol. While I'm cleaning the engine, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a couple of router bits. These have some deposits on the cutting edges and dark spots. This one is pretty dirty, needs cleaning up. What I will do is I'm going to remove this bearing. I'll just put that in there like that. And the bearing, it's fine. There's no, if you run that through the ethylene glycol, all you're going to do is remove any oil or grease that's in that bearing. And we're going to clean some of these carbide drum sanders. Take it off of the mandrel. You don't want to put that rubber in there. These will in time pick up glue or sap or maybe some paint and it'll plug up the carbide. This one looked very similar to this piece of sandpaper. It was all clogged up and I couldn't do anything with it. So I put that in a little container of ethylene glycol and just let it sit in my shop for a couple of weeks and I forgot about it. And took it out of there, ran it under tap water and used a wire brush on it. Cleaned it up pretty good, but it still has a few places that are clogged. Nothing works better than a hot chemical for cleaning. So we're just gonna take this 
and throw them in the pot with the other stuff. If I have a lot of parts that I want to clean, I use a crock pot. Actually, this is a brand new one I've never used, but this is for the shop. It is not for cooking. And being of this shape, there's a lot of parts that will fit in here that won't fit into a round one. Or you can use an old uh, coffee pot. Obviously, they're fairly easy to break, so you have to be careful. Use a hot plate. Put the pan on it. And you want a lid. You want to put a lid on your crock pot. A hot solution of ethylene glycol will work more effectively and quicker than a cold solution. There is no advantage or reason to boil these things like crazy. You just want it to simmer. Any liquid that evaporates will condense on the inside of the lid, drip back into the pan, or inside the lid and drip back into the crock pot. That mild heat down here is just enough just to keep that fluid moving a little bit, which agitates the solution across the parts. I turned this on today. It should be done tomorrow. Need a pair of tongs. Reach in there and get those parts. Old pair of needle nose pliers is pretty handy. If you've got a little metal parts basket that you can put some of those small screws and pieces in, that's handy. And you need some gloves. Ethylene glycol, the cheap stuff, usually green. I mix it 50-50, half ethylene glycol, half water. Uh, turn that on high, heat that solution up until it's just ready to boil, then we'll turn the temperature down to keep it at a simmer. I'll leave that in there overnight. So tomorrow sometime we'll turn it off, let it cool. We're going to take these parts out of here and rinse them with fresh water. This is poisonous. You don't want to drink it. Consequently, you don't want to use this pan or the crock pot or anything else for cooking food. Make sure everybody knows this is to stay in your shop and not to be used in the kitchen. Besides not drinking it and using rubber gloves when you're handling it, it's not a good idea to stand around and breathe the fumes coming off of this either. You can use this in a well-ventilated area or out in the shed, outside on a nice day. You won't have to worry about animals drinking it while it's hot, but as soon as you're done, bring it back inside again, let it cool off. Well, this is still too hot. I need to turn this hot plate down a little bit. There's, there's just no need for this to boil that strong. It just needs to simmer. So I'll reduce that heat a little more. Just to give you an idea, this has only been in here a couple of hours. Look how clean that pipe is already. Works like magic. The HP engine is disassembled for the most part. The piston, and the rings, the wrist pin, conrod, the head. It's got a lot of carbon deposits on the inside. So far I've not been able to get the liner or the crankshaft to come out of there. This engine was packed up kind of quickly when we left one of our assignments overseas and it wasn't cleaned up. That was like 30 years ago and I just found this in a box of parts. So I'm going to take these two items and I'm going to go ahead and put them in that glycol and let them cook. See if that helps to loosen some of this up. That glycol is also pretty good at loosening up thin films of rust. When you're cleaning a model engine, it's a good idea to clean one at a time so you don't get the parts mixed up. This material is just as I fished it out of the glycol. The bearings are cleaned up in the motor. These router bit is completely cleaned up. I haven't touched this. That's the way it came out of the glycol. The grizzly one, it's pretty well cleaned up. This little bit of remaining stuff will come off when I wash it in soap and water. And glycol is a solvent. It'll remove paint and powder coat. These carbide cutters, a brass brush or a toothbrush will remove this little bit of stuff that's remaining here. These, these look almost like new. You're not going to get rid of stain. Like this carburetor is a bit stained on the metal. When I scrub that with a toothbrush and soap and water, that'll clean up a little bit. But any discoloration that's in the pore of the metal, you're not going to get rid of. We got all of those deposits off of this muffler, but probably some of this staining will remain. This header looks almost like new. The carbon is still inside here, but it's very loose. It's not greasy. It's a powdery type thing. 
little soap and water and put that in ultrasonic cleaner will knock that out of there. The uh, piston, the carbon is still sitting on here a little bit, but it's loose. The piston is clean. I just need to uh, scrub that with a toothbrush. When you start cleaning things like the head, all this material is pretty much out of these fins. Uh, most of what you see here is from all that heavy residue that was floating around inside the glycol. These fins are clean. When you get ready to start scrubbing these with a toothbrush, or use a toothbrush, don't go using a wire brush, especially, now this is a, the HP 40 head, I haven't cleaned it yet. But when that comes out of the glycol and you go to clean this, you want to use a soft toothbrush. You don't want to use a wire brush because you don't want to scratch the anodizing that's on this head and spoil the appearance of the engine. On the HP, that crankshaft loosened up by itself. As yet, I have not been able to get this liner to come loose. This thing has been stuck in there for 30 years, so I may just uh, call that good because everything around it is clean. You can see all the chunks of stuff that are still inside the pan. I turn the heat off and let that pan cool down to room temperature. And then I fish out all the big parts that I can find. And I take a coffee filter or a paper towel and clip it inside a plastic funnel. And I start decanting that glycol through this filter media. And it'll remove most of the big chunks of carbon and grease and paint and stuff. The glycol still looks dirty but it's perfectly usable for cleaning another engine and we've removed all of this heavy material. This is the glycol that I had run through the paper towel and it looks more like engine oil. That's still perfectly good for cleaning an engine and I'm going to go ahead and use it to clean the HP engine parts. Quite a bit of water had been boiled off so I'm just going to add some water to replenish that and get it back closer to that 50-50 mix we had before. On a safety note, it's probably not a good idea to leave one of these hot plates unattended overnight. You just can't trust the thermostat in these cheap things to hold a given temperature. 